Good morning, everyone. This is Michael Sowers sitting in for Krista Burns at the Nebraska Library Commission, and this is the December 26, 2013, the last uh, Encompass Live episode of 2013. Um, I am usually the co-host for the last episode of a month, uh, as it is the Tech Talk episode with me, the uh, Michael Sowers, the the technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Krista is usually our show host, but she is on a much deserved uh, holiday vacation this week. So uh, as uh, usual as the last episode of the month, this is Tech Talk, and we're going to be talking to uh, a, a colleague of mine from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, J.D. Thomas, in just a few moments uh, about his uh, social sharing service that he has created. I uh, just want to remind everybody that we are recording, so this will be uh, posted uh, probably within a couple of days, and actually due to holidays, maybe not till uh, next week. If you have questions as we're going along, feel free to type them into the questions area of your GoToWebinar interface. Uh, we also have the ability to turn on people's microphones, so if you'd rather ask a question via audio, just go ahead and say unmute me in the questions area and I can do that. Uh, we'll happily take questions throughout the episode uh, and then I'll be passing them along as we have time or appropriate and, and then we'll always have time for, for Q&A at the end. So uh, let's go ahead and dive right in here, and I uh, have to uh, run the show behind the scenes here too, not just host. So uh, JD, are you on the line? Yes, I am. All right. Well, welcome, JD. Uh, why don't we go ahead and get started and tell us a little about uh, yourself and your background and and what you do? Um, well, I do a lot of things. My day job is for a publisher, Information Today, that hosts library conferences like um, Internet Librarian International, Internet Librarian, Computers and Libraries. And between the shows, I manage a lot of the servers, handle a lot of the social media stuff, a lot of the SEO stuff, that kind of thing. Great. Um, so you've got this uh, service that you've put together, and um, I'm I'm going to let you pronounce it accordingly. Because to be honest, every time I look at it, I feel like I'm I'm, I'm speaking about the Lovecraft mythos. Um, and so uh, why don't why don't you tell us what you, what you got for us today here? Okay, we call it Shogus. Shogus. Okay. <laughs> and it it the S H O G. Well, first of all, we wanted a short URL. <laughs> You know, um, so the S H O G is for sharing Open Graph. Um, if you're not familiar with Open Graph, it's a protocol for metadata that's used by Facebook, LinkedIn, Tumblr. Twitter uses its own. It used to use Open Graph, but it's a way of describing or marking up a web object in a way that tells Facebook and LinkedIn how to display the information to the other users. Um, so that's where the name came from. But we just call it Shogus. <laughs> And what it does is it allows you to take a link to any resource, any HTTP URL, and kind of dress it up, give it a makeover, um, make sure that it looks pretty when it's shared. Um, this is especially important for, I find, libraries and publishers like um, Information Today because so much of the stuff we publish is coming out of a database or it's one part of a larger set of data. And when you share things directly to it, sometimes you get you know, a muddled description, you're talking about the third thing on a page and the description for the first thing, that sort of stuff. Cool. Okay, so how does it work? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it works basically by taking a URL and allowing you to add your own metadata, picture, and description without having any programming skills. Let me actually just give you a good before and after kind of thing. This link here um, is the link to the Job Seekers page on the Philly Free Library website. That page looks like this. It's not fancy, but it gets the job done. But when somebody wants to share that on Facebook to tell their friends, hey, there's job services at the Philly Free Library, this is what they get. Okay. Now, what I did is I created a Shogus link for that page that looks like this when it's shared. You can see it's got a picture. It's got a proper description, proper title. It makes the link much more engaging and much more likely to be shared by others. It helps you get information out further. And I'm going to show you what that looks like on here. So this is the link creation page. Um, this is what you use to create every link, and you can edit it after the 
you know, if you don't like how it came out, you can edit it, or if something changes, you can edit it, and the link will still stay live. So up here at the top in the address, this is the actual URL on the library site. Um, this is a picture. I used um, the Wikipedia Commons to find a public domain picture of the Philadelphia Free Library's main branch that I liked, and I used it. You can upload the images. You can also store up to um, five images of your own that you want to use regularly. Like say you might want your library logo, you might want you know, a picture of an ebook. Um, you can store those in the system, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, so I picked that. I gave it a, a different title. Instead of saying FLP, how to find a job, which doesn't really tell you where you're talking about if a person doesn't know what FLP is, I went with the workplace, which is the name of their job service, and as you can see, added a description. Um, I wanted to make sure that even though I personally, as a private citizen in Philadelphia who doesn't work for the library, was sharing it, I wanted to make sure that when it was shared, the library information was what people saw. Um, so I told it that I'm talking about the Free Library of Philadelphia, I'm talking about their Twitter account, I want people to follow them based on my sharing this link, and it gives you a place to put um, information about where the um, link goes to, just so people on Twitter specifically um, are not confused. And then when you create links to be able to find them easier, you can create tags for them, one or many. Um, you can create as many tags as you want um, to help you find it later once you've built up a large link library. And then I specified the link of Shogus FLP Job Help and saved it. So at this point, I was able to share it. You can see I shared this. I made this last night around um, 9 o'clock, and so far, seven people have shared it since then. And let me just show you what that looks like on Twitter. It looks like this. And as you saw earlier on Facebook, it looks like that. Understand? <laughs> yeah. No, that, OK, those, those look good. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm like thinking as you're, you're introducing this to me, so that, that, that's great. Um, I, so, I mean, it looks better. Okay, what, what are the benefits of, of taking the extra time to do this? I Engagement. guess because here, here's my scenario. I mean, I, I write things to my and, – and I realize I'm not everybody's scenario, so we'll, we'll just go with me for now. Yeah, I post things on my WordPress-based blog. And then I use the publicize feature to automatically send it to Twitter and to Facebook and to whatnot. What this this well, this would take me some extra time. Why why would I want to do this? This is not for everything. I I do a lot of work on a um, WordPress driven site called Accessible Archives, and I use WordPress plugins that handle most of this stuff for me. This is mainly the main purpose for this is things that are going to be. How can I put this? If things look right when you share them, don't do it. <laughs> well, they they don't always. I will say that. <laughs> right. Like in your, I actually I follow your your postings, Michael. So I know that I frequently end up with that weird brown picture. <laughs> yes. Um, if you don't have another image in your WordPress post, it tends to pick that up from your theme. Well, usually I do. That's the funny part. But yeah, that, that, usually, that's a separate problem. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, so if you wanted to override that for a certain situation, another time on WordPress, again, WordPress specifically, that I do this is if I'm going to change the information over time. Like, say I'm saying, telling you about something that's going to happen in a month. I can do that, and then I can take the same link without creating a new blog post. I can update, let me go back to the um, service screen here. Um, I can clone a link and say, oh, it's two weeks from now, or it's one week from now, you know, do kind of a countdown sort of thing without having to create new blog posts, you know, that I want to promote. Okay. But it also goes to your original resource. But the main reason I came, that I started doing this is because we had to share um, PDFs, for example. Um, you know, we want to promote the download of um, the the final program for a conference. When you share a PDF, it looks horrible. Um, let me jump you over here. This is a, a beautiful, beautiful PDF that NASA made available. It's essentially an ebook of artistically gorgeous satellite footage. But if you wanted to share that with your friends on Facebook, this is what they get. Okay, so I took that same information and made this. 
they both go to the same place. They both go to this PDF, but one looks much better when shared. <laughs> Um, same thing really goes for calendar events. Um, let me go. Let me run you through a couple of other ones that I did real quick besides the job one. Sure. Um, like this is the calendar events for my local branch of the Philly Free Library. It's it's not real informative, but this is what would happen if I wanted to you know share this on Facebook. You can make it look like this. This is an actual event that's coming to my library in March. It's a craft thing where they're teaching about um, the history of mosaics and we're going to actually make them. Doesn't look good. <laughs> that is the same event. They both take you to the same place. Neither one involved having to contact the web developer you know, for the library and say, hey, we need to you know, change how we do stuff. This can be done by the, program, you know, the person organizing the um, event. They can provide this information and set this up in, you know, under three minutes is how long mm -hmm. it would take you to make one. Um, same thing here. This is an example of what I was talking about where it can get muddled. Um, the Philly Free Library has a great page full of things like um, Nook screensavers, um, Facebook cover images, things that are shared that are free that the library just does to kind of, you know, reach out and tell people about stuff. But if you share the link to the Facebook cover images and look at the description here, you see the description it gives you is all about the Nook screensavers. <laughs> <laughs> so by creating a Shogus link on top of that, we can link to each part of that page and have the right information. So maybe my the scenario that I'm in where I'm very blog centric and I want to reshare that content that I post out to social services like Facebook and Twitter is maybe not the appropriate not the use target. for this. <laughs> the, yeah, right. Okay. So like if though if I'm a library that we have a website and we have Facebook and we want to sh but but not necessarily any sort of blogging where we want to share a particular thing or we found a really cool link to something that's not even from the library that we want to share in the library's Facebook page or Twitter account this would be maybe a tool to use to dress them up and make them look better and more shareable Exactly. I mean, I find a lot of libraries share things like PDFs directly. Like if you were to go into the Philly job section, there's a ton of PDFs there on how to make a um, good resume, a good cover letter, that sort of thing, that can't be shared directly. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, um, same thing goes with things that are buried deep within calendars. <laughs> Um, right. The, they're just the, the nature of that technology that allows you to put your calendar on the web doesn't necessarily lend itself to social sharing. Okay. Um, Dear Myrtle does have a question, and we've gotten a couple of people uh, already who have said, you know, they're getting it. They they, they see the use for this. Um, but uh, Dear Myrtle, I'm going to hold the one question you have maybe more towards the end in this case uh, uh, for that one. So okay, let's so. Let's say you've sold us here. Uh, how do I actually use it? What, what's involved? That sort of thing. Well, it's still in beta right now, but I am. It's an open beta, so anybody can get an account. Um, let me go here. If you go to Shogus, S H O G U S. Come on. Welcome to live demos. There we go. <laughs> um, and just go to sign up here. Name, email address, password, which just automatically filled my stuff in, of course. Um, you'll get an email that'll come to you, and just click on the confirmation link to verify that you are using a real email address, and it will show up on my list of users. And let me know when that happens, and I will activate the demo. I mean, I will activate the beta. Um, just so you know, anything you do during this beta, it's going to be perpetual. It's not, you know, if you decide you don't want to use the service once it goes live and um, costs money, it won't ever cost much. I'm planning on keeping this, you know, dirt cheap because I want people to use it. But um, well, and, and actually, anything you create there. will stay live. Go ahead. Uh, I'll interject there. That was Dear Myrtle's question. How much? <laughs> ah, um, hey, Pat. <laughs> um, it's we're ta we're going to be talking probably we're guessing like twenty a year. Okay. Um, for a basic use, that, and that'll be for up to like 500 links. Um, if you go above that, we may have to add, you know, start selling additional links. A um, couple other things I didn't go through here. You can do your own domain names. So this is my profile. Um, 
it, I fill in all my Facebook information. Everybody who sets up an account will need to do this. You know, the Facebook publisher would be your page. You know, um, the author would be you yourself. Your Twitter information. These are all defaults. They can all all the Twitter information can be overridden on a link by link basis, as you saw. Um, when you see this section of the profile, just so you know, this is not to gather any information that's used to the links. All this is used for is to allow you to log in with a single click using one of your social media accounts instead of typing a username and password. But here's the cool part. If you have your own domain name, um, like a, what's your domain name, Mike? You got Travel and Librarian? Travel and Librarian .info, yep. Yeah, so you could create a C name called links.travelandlibrarian.info, save it here, and all of your URLs could be in that domain. Oh, okay. Would, like, would I, I would I have to do anything on my end? You would have to create, yeah, there's actually FAQs that tell you okay. how and all. There's, you would set up a, um, a C name pointing to domains.shogus.us. Um, okay. If you can't do a C name, you can use the IP address. I'd much rather use a C name. <laughs> um, that just sends all traffic for that, you know, links.travelandlibrarian.info to us, and then our service takes over processing the individual links. Okay, and um, so so for for those not not in in setting up a domain name, I usually have somebody do that. So so let's see if I understand it correctly. That's something I would need to do with uh, whoever my domain host is. Yeah, your registrar. My registrar. All right. Okay. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, um, well, yeah. no, I know who that. In my case, it's Dotster. But, okay, yeah, so, you would yeah, go okay. into Dotster, you would see where it lets you create new records, and you probably already have a www.travelandlibrarian. So sure. you just create a new one. If it gives you a choice of C name or A record, you'd want a C name, and then it's going to ask you what the C name should be, and that's where you would put in whatever you want to be before your domain name. So it could be links, it could be shares, it could be whatever you want, dot okay. travel and librarian. And then for the destinations where you would put domains.shog.us. Okay. Um, I didn't show you that when I was doing a new link. There's, if I create a link by default, mine links to techfund.org, which is my own personal domain that I've had since you know the early 90s. Um, but these three are available for free. That everybody gets them. So to get to us, <laughs> shogus, and slash 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 dot com, just because <laughs> I think it's fun to say. I like telling people to go to HTTP colon slash 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 dot com. Yeah, yeah. I registered that as a joke in like the year 2000, and I just held on to it. So I wasn't using it, so I threw it on here. <laughs> so if you have your own domain name, you get to use that, but you can also use the other ones as well if you want to just do something that you don't necessarily want linked to your personal, you know. Okay. Domain. So so if I set this up, they would see links dot travel library dot info, but it would it would redirect through you guys anyways. Right. It's, right. Okay. You know how Bitly does, I mean, everybody's seen Bitly links. Sure. All this, all we're doing here is we're doing a lot of the same stuff Bitly does, but we're adding a lot of information along the way. And they should kind of explain the mechanism for that in case there's anybody out here who's actually a web developer or um, wants to know the quick geeky side of this. What we do here is when traffic hits the server, we look at whether it's a browser, like a human browser, or if it's a robot. Um, when Twitter scans a link before when you share it, it identifies itself as the Tweetbot. So if it's Tweetbot, we give it all the metadata it needs to craft a really lovely um, link like this, you know, or like that. If it's a person, we send them right on to, you know, this. Using a um, a redirect, a 302. Like this is, I did this um, URL for this particular event, so I could share it um, over and over. You know, leading up to today. So if a human, and I'm going to do it as a human here, gets it, their browser gets a 302, which is the same thing Bitly sends, same thing all you know URL shortener send, and it tells the person's browser to go here. You know, to the real URL that we all went to today. Understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, if the person coming in is not a human, if it's Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, um, it instead feeds it an interstitial page that's only visible to robots that contains all the markup that they need. And I will show you what that looks like because that's also um, useful. Where is my object? So, 
getting back to the raw stuff, this is what Facebook sees when this job seeker URL is shared. There's no description for the page, so it has to guess. It doesn't know what image to use. It just sees that there's three on the page and you know, hopes for the best. <laughs> the title is shown here. Now, once we put it through Shogus, this is what they see. They see a proper title. They see a URL. They see the description, um, the site name, all that stuff. Um, and that's only visible to the Facebook scraper. Uh, any human being clicking on this is going to get the, um, the job page directly here. And if you are a developer, this is what we're adding to this process. This is the, this is the good stuff. <laughs> this markup data right here is what we are allowing you to put in without having to actually go in and touch an HTML page. <laughs> That's handy. Yeah. Um, the stuff on Twitter, just so you know, um, this is not does not happen magically. For your domain, you have to go into Twitter's card validation system and tell it you're going to be using Twitter cards, and that tells Twitter that, that they should go out and scrape your domain when necessary to find that information. These are the two we support: summaries, if it's got a small picture that doesn't really matter, or a summary with large images. And you just use the validation tool by putting in your first short URL you create on Shogus with Go, and then if you were to do it, Michael, for example, it would allow you to um, support Twitter cards across the entire travel and librarian.info domain. Okay. I just want to make sure that that was covered just so nobody got confused if they <laughs> set up one and it didn't work immediately. And and all of this is documented very well, right? Yeah, there's all, all these. <laughs> we're working. Any, anything that's not, email me or, okay. or let me know, and I will add another section to it. My problem is, as we were talking about earlier, I'm not sure what people know and don't know. So, mm -hmm. um, if it turns out it's something that you need to know, let me know. I can add another section to the FAQ. Um, if you do set up an account on here, do th be sure to read this page. If you're to help and then configure your profile, I break down what everything in that profile is and does, and how it affects the you know the items that are shared and, and I think the screen you're showing right now uh, answers dear Morrill's next question which is do you cover explaining tweet cards and I think I just that that's what we're looking actually at that's what I was just doing yeah, yeah this is this is a tweet card thing and um, how to how to get a tweet card validated is all handled here it's um, if everybody can see that URL if I don't know if you can share that into chat Mike, so people can see it or I can yeah, we'll we'll pull those links and put them in the show notes. Um, but yeah, when you go to validate a card, um, like I said, there's a lot of cards available, and there's more all the time, and we may end up adding more. But for right now, the two that we support are the summary and the summary large image, which are basically the, the closest analog to a um, to a Facebook share. Yeah, we're trying to keep the same. We're trying to find ways to use the same metadata in multiple ways. Sure. Um, actually, I, I'll also show you one. This is the. Let me find it. Oh, this is the one I was at earlier. Okay, so the ALI Midwinter site. It's not marked up very well at all. If you share the home page for ALI Midwinter, this is what you get. And then I made this one to go with it. And then just wanted to show you. This is what it looks like when shared on LinkedIn. I have trouble finding links on LinkedIn after I've shared them sometimes. <laughs> so I took a screenshot. Gotcha. So just just wanted to see that, that it's not just Facebook and Twitter, it's also LinkedIn. Um, if you have a Tumblr and share one of those URLs, um, you'll see it on there that they um, it, it goes out and grabs the um, image, it grabs the um, description for use in the, twi in the t I'm sorry, I'm trying to say Tumblr, in the Tumblr post. <laughs> um, Okay. Questions. So, so what? Okay, just so let's let's go because you just you just threw in, in in Tumblr there, which which is good. What services will this post to right now? Right now, it'll you can post the link to anything. The ones that it's going to give you the biggest benefit for are Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Tumblr. Okay. Those are the ones that actually make use of the metadata that you're adding in by by creating these links. Go back to my... Okay, so so how about this? Create create for me a brand new link to something. 
How about your homepage, your blog? I, okay, and just for the record, that was his suggestion, not mine. Yes, it was. It was definitely mine. <laughs> so, um, and and we're on the blog, it's especially useful because you know the homepage changes all the time. Yes, yes. So, um, and we're also getting a question about Google Plus. If if you're going, if you do or Google or, Plus, it this does provide. Google Plus uses the OG data for the titling and for the picture. But they don't use the description data. I don't know if anybody has noticed that Google Plus, for some reason, stopped grabbing um, text when you share a link. You're, they expect you to put the any text that you want to go with the link. They want you to put in the actual post. So it does work that way. You can do that. Okay. Uh, um, it does work on Google Plus. I just don't promote that just because they used to support full open graph and they stopped. Um, let me do your page real quick here. Okay, so that's this is where we want the people to go, okay. and here's a problem. Like you don't really have a picture on here that's you know suitable for your whole page, but we are going to grab, just grab a picture just so we can um, have one. I love WordPress. You can always figure out how to get to the big image. <laughs> So, oh, by the way, on here you can upload an image if it's stored on your hard drive, but if the image is available via URL, you can have the system grab it for you. Like that. All right. Saves, right. saves that whole step of downloading and then re uploading. Mm -hmm. um, what is your blog called, Michael? The Traveling Librarian. Like that? Yep. You don't want your name in there or anything? Ah, sure. <laughs> I should never have done this because I never remember how to spell your last name. S A U E R S. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> when I, when I created the link to the event today, I um did it over. I had to go look it up every time. <laughs> so, um, and we're just going to grab some text here. Obviously, you could do this whatever, however you wanted, but um. Add a description, and we're just going to call this a traveling librarian. And what's your M Sour? M Sours, yep. Is that right? Correct. Okay. <laughs> and we actually want to use the real domain here, so I will grab that. And we're just going to do a summary card. We're not going to do the large image because that's not a, you know. Sure. And we'll just do, there's a call it demo so I can find it later. <laughs> and and what, it'll actually validate to make sure that this slug is not used by somebody else and you'll get a green check mark. And we can create the link. And then there's that. And now I'll share this on Twitter. And I will also share this on Facebook. These are strictly, these are from the Add This service, if you're familiar with it. I just oh, okay. Because it, it makes it really easy. These are set up to automatically grab this URL and not this URL. If you okay. see my mouse. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, you can't see your mouse. Yeah, you always want to share the link that's in the gray box. The link up at the top is strictly for you as the creator. Okay. So this gives us, you can see here, we already have a little preview of what we're going to go. Obviously, it's not the best picture, but... <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> Just showing you. So there we go. And so now if we go back to Twitter, I should have a new post here. And there we go. It, Twitter always takes a few minutes for the picture to show up because they download it resize it and cache it, um, but okay. it'll be there. If you come back later, it'll it'll have the picture. Um, sometimes if you go to the individual, it'll show up, trust me on this. <laughs> you can see that it does have the text, though. I mean, it has, mm -hmm. all the, um, has exactly what we told it to use. And then back to Facebook, it's down here. Off to my page, and there's now, because this is the narrow column, so you get the little side picture. When it shows up in someone's main news feed, it'll look like that. Okay. And, that, and you can make a nice short one of those for your homepage, especially if you have a blog. This would be a, 
a situation where WordPress might benefit from this. If your home page does not have a static page, if you actually are using a blog the way you do. Mm -hmm. But that's it. I mean, that's it's once you have the stuff that you want to use to create, like so, if you created a nice little, you know, get some graphic designer to make a nice little logo for you, Mike. Right. Yeah. You could, you could actually upload it to your um, Shogus account in your profile. Right. And you wouldn't have to deal with the image thing at all. You could just go and grab it. Right. You know? Okay. And like I said, you could throw up to five of them up there. And if you delete it from here, it still stays there for old links that use it. So it's not like you're stuck to those five forever and ever. Okay. And then if back to the page where you were sharing from, I saw a, a, um, um, a uh, you had the, the Twitter logo, the Facebook logo, the and then you, there, there's a the plus. Google plus. Well, and then there's a okay. plus plus. Oh, the and, again, one. this is part of Add This. Um, oh, okay. I, I would not particularly use these. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just the way the add this system works, um, you could try it. It depends on the system. It depends on whether or not the systems use um, Open Graph or not. Okay. So, so you're using yet somebody else's service to do those buttons. Yeah. This, this is. Um, yeah. This is the. There's add this, share this. There's these tools that stay on top of all the APIs for sharing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what this is. Yeah, this is not something that we chose. Which of these to show here? Look at me. I haven't done a Google Plus one in a while, so it's because Google Plus doesn't grab the description. I'm just copying that. And sharing it. So this is what it looks like on Google Plus. Oh, look! It wants to tag you with Nebraska. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what it looks like shared on Google Plus because Google does not grab descriptions like they used to. Right. Yeah. You know, I had <laughs> noticed that. I had noticed that, but it hadn't really clicked in my brain yet. <laughs> it, it's it's been driving me insane. I spent probably two days digging through you know Google's blogs and trying to figure out if there's some something they were changing but then I realized that it was happening to everybody even to stuff that you share from Google right you know if you go to their SEO you know um, their webmaster blog and share something it still does the same thing it just cuts out the description entirely okay huh. next question um, well, yeah, I'll just uh, take this moment to remind uh, some, some of you have been typing in questions. We've gotten a couple of comments. Uh, Dear Myrtle also said um, her blog always features a good graphic for networked blogs to redistribute, but that auto sharing feature for Facebook only features text from the first paragraph, and sometimes I prefer another quote. This service would work better in that case. Also, my Twitter posts would look a thousand percent better. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um a lot of stuff that's shared through Network Blog. Network Blog actually does something similar to what we do, is adding itself as an interstitial page. That's why you get the bar across the top. I'm pointing at my screen so you guys can see this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's why you get that bar across the top there. So there's actually that can interfere with the way Facebook and other sites um, scrape the data from your page because they might be scraping it from Network Blog and not from your actual, you know, real live website. Mm -hmm. This way, this does the same thing, but it's you doing it and you controlling it. Okay. Um, so what? I, I, eventually, I will. I will ask you maybe to to, to explain a little under the hood uh, a little bit. But what what sort of statistics, if anything, can I get out of this? Is is there any benefit to me from there? It. We do track human clicks. That's what these numbers are here. Okay. So, for example, you know, a nonprofit that I work with in Philly called Career Wardrobe was part. They were one of the Project for Awesome contenders this year. So I promoted, you know, their efforts trying to get people to go vote for them, and they got 149 clicks from human beings based on this, um, not scrapes by robots and that sort of thing. <laughs> um, we can look at the link we've been using to promote this thing because you've shared it a few times as well as I, as well as me, and we've had 79 clicks on the, the link to today's event okay. and you know keeping in mind that these are actual people you know these are not um, the clicks strictly apply to people who clicked on them on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn okay. so that's the only places I think we've shared these I don't think I've shared this on Tumblr <laughs> 
or Google Plus for that matter. Now that I think about it, I probably should have. Yeah, well, but yeah, that's that's this, that's what's available okay. to you there. Um, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but this is a good example of what I was talking about um, about being able to get more life out of your out of a single link. Mm -hmm. um, for most of the time that we've been promoting this event, since we first talked about this, what in October was it? Um, the URL that people were supposed to go to was actually the Encompass Live site, um, where they could register. Mm -hmm. But once that closed, um, I changed the destination to go directly to the GoToMeeting sign-up page. Oh, okay. And I just did that by going into it and changing the link here. <laughs> so you can have, you know, if, a, if an event um, is over, like when this one's over and um, Krista puts the YouTube the video up, right? I might go in here and change the link to point to that. Okay. So the link can let, you know, this URL, same URL that I've shared and that people might be clicking on still if they go and search for stuff, that same URL will now point to the finished product, the, you know, the video on YouTube instead of the sign up page or even farther back to the um, announcement page. Right, and then that way you're you're the 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 stati you're not tracking statistics on four different links. Right, you're I tracking the stats on that one link, which passes through to somewhere else depending on the time and the 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 lifespan of the event in this case. Right, because because this link, like Shogus, you know, and Cup of Slive, this mm -hmm. this URL here, um, because that URL is what's going out to the world, where this URL redirects to. In this case, you know that link today. Um, is under our control entirely, right? So we can we can make that go anywhere. So if it's um, you know if, if I want to link to a um, preliminary program for computers and libraries, okay? Um, because the final program is not out yet. When the final program comes out, I can just go in here and repoint things to the final, so people are always getting the latest data without having to tell people. You know anything different? This anyone who has that link will mm -hmm. automatically go to the latest information. And and we, now, we just we just got a wow that URL changeability is a great idea. So that that was the other big part of this that that kind of drove this is the need to do that. The need that the understanding that once you put something out in social media, you kind of have to surrender control over it. You know, it's not yours anymore. It's now you know part of the social ecosystem, mm -hmm. but. By by being able to have this interstitial layer and control it, you can do things like, um, like I just said, like you know, point it to a different location after an event is over. Hmm. Um, I was going to show you that actually. Here was the. Um, I'm going to take that link I shared of yours. We're just going to see what's happened with it. It's going to get a little geeky here, people. Um, <laughs> ah, we need we need more command line in the show. <laughs> let's take. Okay, so we can see that 14 people have clicked on the link, Michael. Wow. So I'm, hey. going to, I'm going to grab your slug here, and this is the actual you know um, this is the actual server. So I'm going to tell it that I want to see all the. Um, traffic to that slug and we can look here and see actually first let's do the um, 200s these are the people that have actually seen what we presented so you can see the Google scraper has seen it Twitter bot has seen it um, um, flipboard has seen it because this is actually if, if somebody takes one of these links and scrapes it it'll look right in a flipboard presentation but I don't do that personally so I haven't um, I don't list that as something it does because I haven't really had a chance to look into if it's doing it the best way possible but you can see a lot of people are picking up stuff from my Twitter from my tweet for flipboard um, oh, okay got it right okay you can see, like this is a this is a poll so somebody grabbed this and because they're um, user agent was Flipboard Proxy, we fed them the page that I showed you with all that metadata in it. Now, if we go to here and look at 3.0. These, a lot fewer people, but these are the people who actually um, were redirected to your site. So these are some, some people on Google Plus clicked on that link. <laughs> 
um, people on Facebook. That was the Facebook short URL. Um, somebody using Facebook mobile, in other words, got that. This is not as useful if you're not if you don't really know what you're looking at. <laughs> well, sure, no. Well, I get it though, and I, I mean that 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 I think that helps. So I guess here 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 would be my question, and, I, and I'm assuming you can't do this yet. So let's, let's either I'm going to give you an idea, or you're 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 going to like want to smack me. You can obviously access this because you're you're accessing the server, so you've got the logs. Oh yeah. And now me as a user, I can get, you know, the number fourteen. W w were you thinking that there would be a way where I could get like this information? Like no, no. <laughs> no, no, no this, this is because, and the main reason is because these are not discrete to you. This this information, um, it's something to think about. Let me let me. I actually have to talk to somebody about that. Um, oh, I, I realize you'd have to write code to make but, it happen. I mean, that, oh yeah, yeah. That's, um, I'm just trying to think if it would be worth it because what you really you know what what would be of most for use for you would be something like Google Analytics at the destination end, because those are the people that fully load the page and you know and bang the analytics script. Mm, Whereas true. this is just telling people that we gave them the real URL. It doesn't tell us what they did with it. Well, you know, well, they, they, I'm kind of well. See, and 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 you know, this is where I'm. I'm. Those of you listening, I'm. I'm. I'm kind of working all this out in my head too. But like you said, like well, here's somebody who clicked on the link from Facebook versus mm -hmm. Twitter versus Google Plus. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, if if that matters to you a lot, I would use the method. This is what um, I don't know if you know Sheila Wilson. She's our director of marketing at um, ITI. She uses this system. She was one of the very first base on here. If you wanted to do that and if it really mattered that much to you, clone this and Oh, create different links that you share to the different services. Exactly. Okay. I, yeah. So then I've got I've got the one I share to Facebook, the one I share to Google Plus, the one I share to Twitter, and then right. And then on your links page here, because you can have as many as you want. I mean, you're not gonna. Um, you'll know. Okay, this is the original one we shared. If you look at this one, you can see it's the Facebook one. Okay, got if, it. If if it matters that much to you, I, right. I personally have. I mean, in all of my stuff, I don't see. I see a benefit of knowing how many people are coming via social media, but I don't see as much benefit at this level for how many are coming from Twitter, how many are coming from Facebook. Sure. Well, you know, I, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not sure I would actually do that, but I, I know people who would. <laughs> and, oh, I do and, too. That's, and, and we've got a comment that's saying, you know, it kind of lets us know where to put our energy. Well, that does, yeah. That If you're using this for, for very strict marketing purposes as opposed to the aesthetic purposes involved. Um, right. I could see that, and I would do. That's exactly what I would do. Is I would create separate links because I would probably want to tweak. You know, if I'm sharing something to LinkedIn, I'm sharing something to Facebook. I might not want to use the same verbiage for the description. Right. You know, Facebook is a little more. You know, Twitter is extremely casual because you know, 140 characters. Right. <laughs> Facebook is kind of like the the mama bear. You can kind of be casual, but you can also be a little. Pro and then tech and then LinkedIn is you know more Papa Bearish, right? Def of yeah, definitely pro there. Yeah. So in that case, you know, create the first link, clone it, you know, and then make it to okay. your target audience. Sure. And, and another comment. Uh, thanks for the friendly GUI. Uh, this stuff is fascinating, but scary looking. Uh, so I think when when we were you were grepping the the, the server logs there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The the interface that was the whole idea behind this because. I was getting requests from people in a marketing department. Can we make it so that when we share this link to Facebook, it looks like this? <laughs> and right. you know, if you're if you're a web designer, you absolutely can do this. I mean, it it would take you, you know, depending on you know your speed of learning. You know, if you go and you know study up on Open Graph and study up on Twitter's custom metadata, you know, a couple of days you can you can go through and and add this stuff to your web pages. Um, but you need to be, uh, I won't say a coder, but at least a web developer or, or a somebody who's comfortable working directly in HTML. Mm -hmm. um, or in the case of a lot of people, PHP as well, because you know, you're not going to want the same information on every page. You're going to want to have to do it. But this can be done by anyone. Um, you know, the people that I have, that I started out doing this, some people who are my original testers who said, hey, what does this mean? <laughs> Those are people that have zero technical skills beyond generally using the office and web.
Mm -hmm. you know, these are people that are perfectly comfortable in Excel, but not in, you know, Compose. <laughs> sure. So, so let me ask you this: when you were when you when you first started explaining this, uh, this is kind of an open-ended question, and it's also inherently difficult by the the subject matter. But would 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 you fault put this under the category of of the semantic web in any way? Not really, because okay. well. Yeah, in, in the sense that that metadata is driving a lot more than search. In that sense, yes, I would. Okay. Um, because you know, in this case, the metadata is driving engagement. Not not. It's not helping people find these pages. It's helping people engage with these pages. Okay. It's it's making them more interesting. It's making them visually appealing. In the case of Twitter, this is something they actually tell you about, and they're why they recommend doing it. Actually, let's see if your picture showed up yet. It's still not there. There it goes. See? There we go. yeah, okay. <laughs> it just takes a while for them to process the image. But here's the big thing. Okay. If you share this without the Twitter card, this space right here is the entire clickable space. This is the only part that's live. Now look at my mouse. This takes us off to Michael's page directly. So, hey, let's follow Michael. Too late. Oh, I thought I was following you. Oops. I I follow I, I'm probably following you via LibConf is what it is. Probably, yeah. So now I'm following you directly. <laughs> okay. But because we put in your Twitter handle in the link, it shows us your full name here. You guys uh, okay. And it gives us this, which is clickable. The picture is clickable. The entire description is clickable, as well as, of course, the, the thing that looks like a link. So it gives you a much bigger target for your audience to, you know, hopefully... <laughs> Maybe not accidentally, but easily click right. on something. <laughs> Let's not call it an accident. But Acc you get accidentally idea. works. <laughs> you're, you're making a bigger target of your content. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. Uh, so... All right, so let, let's let's talk under the hood for a few minutes, and uh, so I, I mean, and and I'll just start with with what languages is written in, um, and, PHP and, and any, anything else you may may or may not want to show us under the hood. Um, not really. I mean, it's it's not that complicated stuff, <laughs> um, and uh, there's really nothing much. Let me. Script-wise, here this is just like I said. Just it's just a standard Apache log. Anybody who's got a website who has access to the log files has that. I was just grepping in them to find out, you know, to find certain things. There's not a lot under the hood to tell you. I mean, there's a couple of guidelines that would help to know that, for example, um, LinkedIn still kind of favors a um, a three by four image, like the traditional, you know, 800 by 600, 1024 by 768 style image, whereas Facebook has recently gone to, as we can all see, these big, wide um, 580 by, what is it, 335 or something. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're creating a link, if you do want to really fine tune things, you might want to use a different image for a LinkedIn centric share versus a Facebook centric share. Um, other things under the hood, we, we handle the resizing of the images when you give us the link to download or if you upload the image um, but for quality the closer you can get to a thousand pixels wide the better the picture will be because it means we'll have to do less resizing if you upload a tiny little you know 150 by 300 pixel image it's not going to look good when it's scaled <laughs> mm -hmm. to share on here um, that's kind of under the hood stuff um, But you, you, I keep thinking that you're describing like somebody's full time job for you know. Just I don't make, think so. Making I mean, all this stuff right, and well, I mean, from you know, if you're oh, really going for a full marketing, not 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 the writing of it, but the using of this tool, you know, I just I write my content, and I let some something else push it out. Whereas if you really are trying to get those hits, and you're really trying to 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 track that, this could be somebody's job for for your institution. <laughs> If you have enough web, if you have enough content going out that doesn't share again, remember a lot of stuff in WordPress shares fine natively, and you can if you're sure. if you're using WordPress standalone, and you install the Yoast at WordPress SEO tool, it does Twitter cards for you, and it does let you have full control over the way the Open Graph stuff works. If you're using that, you don't need this at all. You do not need this in any way, shape, or form, and that can account for a lot of people who post. Who do a lot of frequent content? 
Hold on one second. I don't want to cough in you guys. Although, well, and you know, I'm just saying, you know, me, it is my personal blog, and yes, I use it to kind of market myself, but I'm not really concerned with hit counts and you know and and it's just i i put it on these services just to do it whereas you know somebody in a in a in a business or you know major library might be a lot more concerned about how it looks and and um where the link is we we do also have one other comment here it's just, if, if you're looking for a tagline for your service uh making a bigger target for your content <laughs> <laughs> that didn't make a note of that <laughs> Because that that really is what it does. I mean, it just makes yeah. you know, it's it, your the destination is the same. It's just a matter of you know putting you know, hey, maybe it's good that we're doing this unboxing day because it's it's really you know all about the wrapping of the present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good point. <laughs> so here's here's the one other question I have that is that is that has come to mind, and this is the the cynic in me question uh, that I ask or should ask of all services such as this. Okay, so you you now have all of this data of what we're sharing. Um, do, do we have any reason to be concerned about what you're going to do with it? No. <laughs> um, the only data I have is the same, you know, I, I can see where stuff came from. Right. But it's not, you know, we're, we don't We're not pulling any data from your social media services. It's just what you're putting in there, just on your links. I'm not sure what kind of other data there could be concerns about. Oh, I just wanted to make you defensive for a minute. Okay, I'm just, I'm just trying to think if there's something I could collect. I mean, I'm trying, cause, you well, know, it's just, I, I mean, I, yeah. it's more just a, a larger question of y y y this would be yet another third-party service that we're using at the moment for free. You know, what's sure. your terms of service? I guess. It's, it, no, I it, see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. The um, there's there's nothing that we're collecting, and there's nothing that we're we're using that you're not using that we're not giving back to you. Like those the counts of the clicks and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a terms of service up there to read, and it basically just says, um, well, you should read it. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> it's. I should. Things. I'm sure, but you know. Yeah. You know. It's not very long. Uh, <laughs> it's. it's, it's, it's there's not a lot. We're not. I didn't worry too much about that aspect, just because we're not collecting. We're not in a position to collect a lot of data. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, we are basically just like, you know, we're essentially bitly on steroids. It's you know. Okay. Well, and which which I suppose leads me to another question, which which may not be answerable, but 2013 seems to have been the year that services shut down. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if I spend the next six months running all my links through you, and then you shut down, they all break, right? They all break. What a, that's one thing we are working on. I wish I'd actually hoped to have it up here before. Is I'm going to have it set up in a way that you can download a um, um, .hc access file. Okay. That would handle all the redirections for your links. Oh, okay. Like if, we ever, if we ever shut down, you could just append it to your. All you'd have to do is point your, you know, links dot travelandlibrarian.info back to your main site. Okay. And then wow. just append this to the end of your HT access file. So if anybody hit those slugs, it would redirect them to wherever you told them to go in the first place. Okay. So, so kind of if 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 long term concern, um, or if if long term working is is your concern, best to. Uh, use for your now, own to, URL. Use your own URL, and then you'll have some sort of like Google Takeout sort of. Yeah, thing. that's. A, I'm playing. I'm putting, putting on the profile where you can just okay. download it at will. It's you know, it's it's not. It's generating that is, is not like resource intensive, so it's not like something I would have to schedule to happen like overnight because it's going to slow down the system. Okay. No, it's one of those things that I can I can just it's essentially just pull out a report for you, and if you just save that text file, um, you're good to go. And once I do that, well, I'll, I'll obviously put a. Um, addition to the FAQ on how to use it. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> and you have to be able to edit your HD access file. So we, we, yeah. we're, we're talking another level there. But, um, you know, I'm not sure I could, but I, I know the guy who would be able to for me. So yeah, I'm that's, gonna show you, I'll give you a quick idea if I can here. And, and we, we do have another comment from Dia Myrtle that this is uh, uh, in in her realm of genealogy, people do look at old content a lot, so this would oh, be yeah, cool, absolutely. Um, in the long run. I thought I had a redirect in here. Ooh, more code. 
This is, yeah, this is an HG access file for a blog. You remember when I talked about this stuff, Michael? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is blocking access. Um, if you, anybody who uses a WordPress blog has probably seen or heard of the um, massive waves of people trying to hack into the um, um, admin interface. So what this does on mine is I don't allow anyone to even try it if they're coming from outside the U.S. because I don't have anybody who should legitimately be logging in there from there. Right. No, I'm not going to bother. But yeah, yeah an HG access file that tells you know people to redirect to the original place would kind of future proof your stuff as long as you're using your own C name. Right. Um, okay. Because you know, because you have to be able to control where people go on that. But the re one of the reasons we're kind of been slow rolling this out um, is we are very concerned that this be it's extremely sustainable from our own point of view because I'm using it myself. <laughs> you know, you're, um, you're you're eating the dog food. Yeah, <laughs> me me using it and me plus fifty people using it is really not a big difference from my point of view as far as like you know the resources it takes right um, so that's why I think we can keep the pricing on it as low as you know very low because I want this to be sustainable I don't this is not going to ever be my I don't expect this to ever be my full-time job you know managing this thing mm -hmm. this is a this is more what I would call a utility than a, than a tool if you know what I mean sure okay this is you know this is the equivalent of a batch file that you keep that's because it's very handy as opposed to an application you've gone out and written in C++ <laughs> So, so what? And, and 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 you know, feel free to be as as wibbly wobbly as you want on this. But what what sort of time frame are we looking at coming out of beta? I am hoping to come out of beta sometime around March. Okay. Um, because I want to get. I need right now. I've got a, a lot of people using it. There's a lot of links in the system, but they're not a very diverse group of people using it. <laughs> um, I've got you know, ITI marketing people. I've got a few bloggers. I've got. Um, I've got a couple of authors, but um, actually I have a band. <laughs> oh, hey, there you um, go. So, but I'd like to get a little more diversity. So I also would like to, you know, the people I have using it are on the, with the exception of the marketing people, are a little on the techie side. So it's easy for them, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to get a little more diversity in the user base so I can find out, are there rough spots that I can, you know, sand down and make things easier? Right. And that take that takes a little larger of a user base. Well, and and now here's maybe a, a suggestion, something that I think I I I know me and and my work process, and if I have to copy and paste from one screen to another, that might I, I won't say discourage me from using it, but it won't exactly encourage me to use it. Now, if I had something in my browser where I could say right click on a page. And say, send send the page I'm on to Shogus. It, it, we're it, actually yeah we're actually thinking about um, that we're, we're talking think about doing like a bookmarklet sort of thing. Yes yes just, yeah. yeah. The the problem the reason we haven't done this in a, we haven't been in a hurry to do this is because most of the people most of the pages that this is used on the data is not there so we could do we could pre-fill in the URL and maybe grab the page title if it was available sure if, if right was, but um, you still would have to type in the description and and frequently that's going to be a matter of copying it from the original page mm-hmm okay um, but it's that is something we are looking at okay. we are, we are looking well, it's at, just, uh, like, I guess that would that would I, I realize you could never completely automate it but that that would at least just purely from my point of view that would encourage me maybe to use it more, um, if at least it was partially automated. Yeah. Or well, you know, one was, of the things we're we're talking about doing if on the that's not the page, that's the page, um, and this is something we kind of stopped working on because of the holidays. The the main developer and myself both got kind of busy. <laughs> um, yeah, it happens. Is you know when you put in the URL here, having it going out and grab the title. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just, just you know, kind of try to autofill some stuff. What this does now, when you go in here, is just make sure that it's a valid URL. Gotcha. So you'll you'll see real. I'm not sure if it'll even show up on here, um, but see there. Just that little flat. Right. That's going out and making sure that you're not putting in a bad URL because it won't let you create something that's not you know web accessible over right. HTTP. 
Um, a, another question just came in. Um, what, what, how does it work if you, if that URL there is a YouTube video? Well, first of all, it would work, um, but it would actually be better to share the YouTube video directly on, on Facebook. YouTube provides a very special type of open graph markup for embedding video, so it can play in the, in the Facebook feed. Okay. Um, I think it does it on LinkedIn too, I'm pretty sure. I know it does it on YouTube. That's, I would not do that. I would personally not share a, if I wanted people to be able to watch the video on YouTube, I would share the YouTube URL directly. Now, if I wanted to, again, tart it up, you know, make it, you know, give it a makeover and make it um, a destination as opposed to having it show in the feed, then you could use this. If you put in a URL there to a YouTube video, it would treat you just like any other link. You could put it in a static image so it would show that picture instead of the typical, you know, Facebook grabs a YouTube thumbnail with a little play button on top of it. And again, I'm gesturing all over with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I was like, you know, okay, yeah, it's like this. So, so, <laughs> so if 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 you if if you share the YouTube directly, not using your service, then it would, for most services, be playable right in the the, the feed of, from Facebook or whatever. Yep. Whereas if you if you used it through Shogus, they would then have to click, which would then go to the YouTube page and then play. Yep, exactly. Okay. Like I'm gonna actually give you a quick little. Oops, stop, stop that. <laughs> John, John Green is yelling at me. Um, if we go back to the debugging tool that I showed you earlier and do it on a YouTube video, see, they actually include this, which they can get directly from the, because they have the video, they can grab um, this array. Okay. And this is what's passed into you, this is what's passed into Facebook itself that allows it to build a player. Um, okay, where, whereas it. through Shogus, it would just be a static. This At is this point, YouTube. We, we are actually working on video. If you go into okay. advanced link types here, you'll see um, we're working on being able to embed sound and video. Oh, all right. Both video. But there, the problem we have with the video is it's we have to be, if you have a website like you know um, of your own and you want to embed video in there, you can do stuff to tell the person, okay, you need this codec, you know, here's how to get it and here's what your browser should do about it. You can't do that on Facebook. So Facebook, you know, it'll, the video will work if the person has the codec, but you can't help them get the codec if they don't have it. Gotcha. Okay. So that's, so, that's so, where these, we keep running into kind of a wall on these. It's, it works sometimes. It depends on the format. Um, like it'll work for OGG if you're running uh, Mac or Linux, but it won't work in Windows. Windows are right. <laughs> so, um, so these are, these are more not issues with Shogus. These are issues with... Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So but yeah, you, you can see in the way you know Facebook gets all the right open graph data that it needs from um, from YouTube directly. I wouldn't want to you know I wouldn't want Shogus to break that if if your goal is to have a person watch the video on Facebook. Now, if your goal is to talk about the video and explain why it's awesome and why they should go to your blog post and read and watch the video as well as read your comp. Shogus all the way. Okay. You know, because you know how easy it is to in, embed a Facebook video in YouTube in WordPress. You know. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Literally, literally, you put the URL on a line by itself, and you're done. Okay. And then you can write up your own, you know, thoughts and commentary about it. And in that case, you know, Shogus would be very handy for getting people to that page. Um, and Myrtle is asking one other question, and, and maybe Myrtle, you can clarify this a little bit. She says, what about using this for posts, not redistribution of, say, a blog like Vacation Picks? Um, if you want to take a stab at that, I'm not sure I'm clear on your question, so if you, if you could clarify um, that. Does, does uh, Myrtle have audio? Um, not that she's told okay. me. Okay. Um, but uh, Merle, if you have audio, just say so. We'll, we'll happily turn on your microphone. Um, not, not, not a lot of people we found over the years have been willing to do that. Okay, so. just checking because I, I happen to know that. Okay, she's on an iPad, so not, okay, uh, yeah, okay. She's a webinar pro, so. <laughs> um, okay, it's kind of an apples and oranges thing here. This is not, you know, you don't share photos directly through this. However, if you had a blog post. Um, or a web page full of, you know, a gallery of photos. <laughs> oh, oh, she's okay. She says we can't unmute her. Let's let's go ahead. Uh, Myrtle, you're unmuted. 
Hi, can you hear me, JD? Yeah, hey Pat, how you doing? Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, boy. Five minutes with you really blows my mind from a technology point of view. <laughs> anyway, my my question you're right, you gotta have the photo somewhere. It could be in a Flickr collection or Picasso collection, you know, album. Um and but the concept is in one place you could design a post and then just keep clicking those buttons for Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter and all that. Correct. And that you're pulling content from your blog and doing it. So it might actually streamline and I wouldn't have to copy and paste my little comments that go with a picture of my granddaughter from Christmas. Right. You could you could set that up, you could you know, especially if I use Flickr myself, um, and I have used Shogas to point to a Flickr set or to a Flickr slideshow. Mm -hmm. If you link, to, if you link directly to a slideshow on Flickr, it doesn't yeah. grab the um, set description. It doesn't grab. It grabs the information for whatever picture is loading first. Makes sense. Yeah. Instead of grabbing the actual description of the set and the title of the set, so I have done that. I've used Shogas to um, link directly from Facebook and Twitter to a Flickr slideshow. Okay. Um, cool. So, and also with Flickr, you can, um, you know, right-click on the image and use that, you know, right-click on the image and copy the image URL and paste it into Shogas so you can avoid that whole download and re-upload thing. Okay. Very cool. Thanks for sharing this. Um, I picked this up in my main news feed on Facebook because you had an interesting graphic. <laughs> See, thank you. And that's, that graphic, just so you know, that's, that's stock photo. That's like... It's part of, um, I either got it from stockphoto.com or iStockphoto, but mm -hmm. it, it, it gives the idea, it, like I said, people are, I don't want to trick people, it's not the goal, but people's eyes notice when, when something looks pretty. <laughs> I totally get that, and I found myself doing the, okay, download a cool picture from that other person's blog post so that you can redistribute that and point your followers to that other blog post. So I'm always downloading, then uploading, and this would be very interesting to you. Sure. Yes, because I do a lot of that curating work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you do. I'm, I, I'm <laughs> um, yeah, you do a great job at that. Um, everybody who doesn't know Dear Myrtle is, Dear Myrtle is, she's, if it comes to genealogy and you have questions or looking for resources, Check out her blog. Check. <laughs> I did not know she was going to be here. By the way, <laughs> I had no idea she was registered for this. But I'm and, probably going to have to pay you extra for that, JD. <laughs> well, and, and and I will say, you know, watch out. We might ask you to be a presenter on the show someday. So uh, actually, yeah, <laughs> you'd be great. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for technology week. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. We do this every Wednesday, usually, just not these two weeks. So, all right. Thank you for that. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and meet you again. And and we 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 have uh, gone past our hour, which we we are cur perfectly capable of doing. But um, just in, in the interest of time, I guess, JD, is there anything else you you'd like to tell us? Say, um, here's your chance. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. nothing be on the spot. No, I think I've said everything. I, I covered everything that I was really concerned that, you know, I was afraid I was going to forget stuff. Um, this URL, by the way, if, if you want to find out whether or not your um, site could use this, developers.facebook.com slash tools slash debug. Um, that's the place to go. Like, we'll take a look at, um, you know, Michael's blog. <laughs> Run it through there. And this shows you what Facebook scrapers are going to see. So if somebody shared her today, we get you know this nice um, set of information based on what he's got up there today. You get the idea. And I am, as we speak, adding that to um, uh, a link here so that that will show up in our show notes for anybody who missed that. And so. 
Um, this is where usually more than one person is kind of handy because Krista would be doing this as I'm talking. <laughs> now I'm trying to do both of them at the same time, and you know it, it works to various degrees. So, <laughs> all right, JD, thank you very much. This was wonderful. Um, I, I think uh, I'm I'm going to definitely be taking a, a, a maybe a, a third look at this. I know I have an account. Um, yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> And it just just the way I you know ever, I've I've automated as much of this as I can, but I can definitely see some uses for this. And it sounds like from our audience, uh, many other people have seen uh, uses for this. So hopefully you get a, a few more beta testers um, out of this uh, for that. So and if any of you guys that are listening, sign up. Um, drop me an email. Can you um, give them my um, JDT at? Uh, That address, um, if everybody can see that. Oh, uh, okay. uh, Actually, now I got to get to the right screen here. Uh, <laughs> this is the chat thing. Um, JDT at Yargan, which is like bargain, but with a Y instead of a G. I mean, instead of a, instead of a B. <laughs> um, All right. Just drop me an email if you create an account on here, and I will activate it. That um, once you have validated your email address, um, your account is not active until I actually make it so. <laughs> Okay, so it's JDT at Yargan, Y-A-R-G-A-I-N dot com. Correct. Um, and we'll, we'll throw that in there. All right. Uh, well, thank you very much. I am going to go ahead and take control back for just a minute or two here. Uh, I usually have a, a couple th uh, extra things I like to show, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get on my... Uh, you need to be writing using good passwords uh, soapbox here yet, uh, yet again. Uh, I, I tend to do that almost once a month here or something like that, but uh, with, with things that have happened lately. Uh, so thank you, JD. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take control back here, and I want to show this screen. Um, so uh, I just have uh, one particular link I'm going to show here, and this is... Uh, have you been have I been pwned uh, there have been a lot of security breaches lately um, target is uh, I'll mention that one but that's credit card data not uh, email addresses and passwords but we'll watch that but as you can see here um, 152 million accounts from Adobe were were um, hacked recently and uh, Gawker and Yahoo and for librarians that Adobe one is very important uh, especially because if you have an Adobe ID for um, uh, ebooks, uh, ebook DRM, uh, OverDrive, uh, that sort of thing. So all you need to do is type in your email address here and click Pwn, and it will tell you uh, whether or not your account was uh, accessed or your your account information was accessed. And in my case, both through Adobe and for Gawker. So I needed to uh, change both of those passwords and um, change any uh, passwords that may have been similar to that. So um, maybe in a future episode I'll be talking about uh, some services that you can use. I've been using LastPass for the last couple of months and creating nice complex passwords and not having to remember them, things like that. So um, if you're thinking, oh no, my passwords are good, my passwords are safe, you might want to check out this website and uh, see if they aren't as safe as you think they are. Uh, so with that, I'm going to give uh, JD one last uh, thanks and uh, welcome everybody to join us on the next Encompass Lives. They are usually on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time, uh, as it has been this week and will be again uh, next week. They are on Thursday due to the holidays, and next week we'll be talking about uh, Beyond Mark, BibFrame, and the future of bibliographical data. So we had social data going on today and bibliographic next week, and then we've got internships coming up, hot titles for a cold month. I'll be on that. We're going to be doing some book talks, uh, passive programming for teens and tweens, and then our next tech talk, which has yet to be determined uh, for January uh, on the 29th. So if you have any ideas, just let me know. Also, we do have a Facebook page, so if you are a Facebook user, feel free to follow us uh, with Encompass Live on Facebook, and there you will be able to find all of the information about upcoming shows and reminders that we're about to go live and things like that. So once again, I want to thank everybody for attending and JD for uh, talking to me today, and we will see you next week on the next episode of Encompass Live. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.